I don't think Ten Hag has that aura, like where people are like scared of him that way. Ten Hag is not that big of a personality, or he hasn't like won the players enough over that they trust him completely. I think there is some issue there. You think this is like uh, uh, basically not like discipline issue or something? Like two games we've seen, United just concede these absolutely stupid penalties, which have nothing to do with the game and how they're playing. Yeah. completely like swings the whole moment yeah. right like and yeah. i would add again three games because even brentford bisaka played uh, tony on side was the only one who was like yards away from the back line it's lapse in concentration yeah and yeah today also i would chalk it down to lapse in concentration and chelsea was fucking horrible like hmm. thank god today we got at least salvaged a point because yeah. otherwise the focus would have been there hmm. but uh, absolute shit show and i think i'm done with the manager i think these are these 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 sort of things come down to coaching yes there is an aspect of like individual errors uh, and i get it like if the players like bisaka is probably not the best uh, you know apple in the tree like at united but you have to like organize your team uh, defense and all of those things come down to coaching and i think it it's a big miss and thank god the results are going this way because i think it will make the decision for the board very easy like I think we'll have another Dutch manager potentially might or might not win silverware, but he'll definitely be sacked after the FA Cup. Like no matter what happens, this is it. It's, it's not. I can't blame the players as much as I can blame the coach here because it. You need to when you're leading two one up at like eighty five, eighty six minutes. There are certain things that you have to instill into your players to close those games out and not make shitty mistakes like this. But, but Van Bissaka has always been this way, right? I mean, he's been instinctive, he's been aggressive, he's tackling. I think the one—that's the one thing he always does. He's tackling. I mean, he's going forward, and he, his general fullback play is not as great as his tackling and defense and all that. And I've and I've seen him make these mistakes time and time and again. It's, it's not an Eric Ten Hag problem per se. I mean, yeah, there is some part to it, but I don't think it's him all. It's Van Bissaka more yeah. and Ten Hag less is what I feel. Mm-hmm. It's always I mean, some player or the other who's making a mistake in every game, and that's costing us like points. Sometimes you have to go back to the to the coaching and to the manager to see like why the discipline. Like discipline is an issue which has to be coached, right? It yeah, persistent. Like when you when you're defending, you have to be calm, you have to be patient. All of these things come from coaching, and I think if the coach itself hasn't given you those instructions, then you make these rash decisions. Also about consequences, like. Sometimes some coaches have this aura that you make these mistakes and you feel so shit scared going back into the dressing room. I yeah. was telling Sid the other day, I don't think uh, Ten Hag has that. I don't think Ten Hag has that aura, like where people are like scared of him that way. Um, yeah. We were just seeing. Uh, um, I don't know if you guys have seen uh, uh, the Together documentary, City's uh, Netflix documentary, which came out, mm-hmm. The Travel. Uh, basically. uh it's uh, their la- their se- last season pep guardiola is, is a mental case bro like he's uh, he's he's crack literally like the way he manages his team um he's he's literally psychologically in their head i don't think ten hag is able to do that um, and today also we saw a lot of like uh, like differences between how they were defending and attacking there were a lot of moments where they were good but there were also a lot of moments where I was just like I don't know what tactics these are. The world in tactics, bro. <laughs> yeah. And, and then uh, Abhinav, I, I get it. Like there could be two things, right? Like Bissaka could be bad, and also Ten Hag coaching. Like those two things can independent coexist, mm-hmm. right? And it's not just this game. Like throughout the season, it has been shaky. Like. Okay. Throughout the season, we didn't have Van Bissaka. We've conceded. I was just going back to Wamsi's like stats that he pulled up and how many goals we conceded. Mm-hmm. Like two goals, four minutes versus Bayern. Like two goals in two minutes. Like this is unheard of at a top club where you concede two goals in like such quick succession or like fail to close out games. And the number of like points that we lost, I'm sure like we are right up there. And uh, I think to 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 Nirav's point. Ten Hag is not that big of a personality, or he hasn't like won the players enough uh, over that they trust him completely. I think there is some issue there, and then the other piece, uh, the other piece that I'm absolutely like uh, agree with uh, Nirav is that uh, he is not an Arteta or 
Pep Guardiola. He's like tactically also not that strong. So that's why I think the players are not bought in. Like if you're good, players will buy in. Bro. Like it's mm-hmm. not not rocket science. I think like your tactics have to be good. Yes, man management is a play, but Pini yeah. jumps out, and I don't think he is one. So no, I, th- I think that, it's two things, right? I think I, I, you either have to have the aura like Pep or Klopp or any of the managers of that caliber who have proved themselves or you have to be tactically good like Arteta or any of the new managers who are coming in. If I think Ten Hag is neither. I think that's where that's what puts him in that difficult spot with the players. Like these these many level of individual mistakes and these calamities should not happen on this level for a club like United. And I think that's basically what's, you know, screwing them up. But do you think Ten Hag is not telling his players to like be more focused when they're leading and not throw away games? It's, it's, it's it. very simple. Yeah, he would yeah, it's it. very simple. Yeah, yeah. But they, I mean, not not listen, listen. But it, it's just that they do not have that. Okay, if if I screw this up, some you know, I will not be starting the next match. I mean, they, there is nothing sure. of that intimidation there. Right? But that's also because we don't have the squad depth to like. fucking bench players when we need to right to mm-hmm. prove a point and i am not questioning the intent of either the manager or the players to like not throw away games i am i'm pretty sure nobody wants to lose the game like they did at chelsea right but and and it's very simple for like any manager to like not tell instruct his players to like keep the ball keep your heads don't lose it and then like just mm-hmm. see the see the game through right but even then like we are seeing repeated patterns where the same players are like losing the plot every single time and giving away points that we are already have in the bag so i would also put the blame equally on the players like yes maybe tenak does not have the aura true but he also has his hands cuffed a lot of the times because he can't prove a point by putting a player on the bench when he doesn't have the squad depth mm-hmm. um i d- disagree with that honestly mm-hmm. i think like uh, it doesn't matter about squad depth is fine like it it only matters when you have a style of play and when even the shittier players or whatever you have they're trying to implement something you can't just like um, you know play the sort of football which is which is only good against big teams or something like that or like specific teams you have to imply your personality and your own philosophy onto the team regardless of who the personnel is Uh, mm. Just like maybe like Ange Postecoglou is a good example. Barely had anyone like uh, any proper, you know, starting eleven this year, but still kept on playing the way he is, and they're like eight points better than United now. Uh, it's not even about points; they have a clear philosophy. They know how they're going to play. They have a lot of difficulties which they're going to face, defensive, uh, 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 you know, problems. But still, they have a philosophy. They're going to play that. I think United has had a good team today. I, I don't think there was any reason for him to, you know, uh, a- any reason for Ten Hag not to play the way he wants to play. I think this philosophy discussion about the United way and all that is a very vague discussion. I don't understand it. Hmm. Um, but yeah, I wanted the, to hear Nihal's thoughts. Like, you, you, do you think um, this philosophy discussion that like Ten Hag doesn't have the players right now? He has to play transitional football. This does this matter, or should he just start the process already? Like, what's the what's the hurt? What's the way? I mean, the style of play should have been visible for all of us to see. Mm-hmm. Like, there is, it's so erratic that like you, you dude. I bet that eighty-five to ninety percent of United fans do not know, including myself, like what are kind of players, like what United will, which kind of United will show up for a particular game. It's mm-hmm. a roll of dice for us, right? And two years into your management career, irrespective of injuries, irrespective of lack of personnel, it should not be the case. True. Like you need to know. Like if you're Jose Mourinho, you know how Jose Mourinho's teams go in. Mm-hmm. If you're Hurling Club, you know how Club's teams go in. Yeah. Like you know, there is a and Pep has been consistent. He's been evolving, but you know he has a signature as well. Right? There isn't one. Like clearly, like no one knows. It's a roll of dice. So clearly, it's just that he's putting. A, 11 people out there and some day sometimes they're clicking and sometimes they're not right so i think that is bs and you and example is perfect dude like he did not have any of his like he had so many injuries throughout the season but they are highly entertaining every game doesn't matter like how they play it's just like full metal football like sorry wrong use of the word <laughs> abhinav i couldn't think of anything else but yeah, it's a, you know it's a, it's a, yeah. 
high octane like you know what kind of spurs show up to every game like it's an entertaining game like that that should have been the case by now for ten hag right like we saw that with arsenal in the second season as well like arteta in his first uh, in his second season you knew you knew what kind of arsenal would come and play like they went to city they played they had a really good game at city right uh, and then every we all knew that like next season they're going to get better similarly to with club also like first season he failed with in europa finals and everything but in the second season he you know st- stepped up owned into it like actually i think they were the only team to beat city that season i think to break their invincible like run, yeah, run. Yeah, so there was clear identity for great teams and great managers and eric ten hag just has been hiding behind injuries and like players and everything so yeah, yeah. Um, I read an article in the Athletic yesterday that apparently Tenag is going to stay. Like this is coming from Laurie Whitwell, and he's saying that um, in yours thing that sacking the manager right now is probably going to be too much change in a season that they've already like overhauled the rest of the staff above Tenag, and apparently Tenag is on board to work as head coach, which is what's, against what's which is against what potato sorry, potato what? bro. Potato, What's potato. So th- the thing is, uh, like when he had first signed on for United, uh, he had a certain amount of, like in his contract, he had said that I want a certain amount of say in how we approach players, what kind of our philosophy is this that, and now, basically the power will reside with people like Dan Ashworth, people like Umar Barada, and like Jason Wilcox, right? And he is sort of going to be a tool used by these three people to implement the football that they vision and vision. I guess that's what he's saying. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, like neither of these three are right now on the team. They're not actively working at United, and these three are should be the people who have to decide the next manager at United because they have to essentially work with them, right? So I don't see Ten Hag getting sacked immediately at the end of the season, no matter what happens, because of this only reason that. The new manager has has to be appointed by these three folks and not by any any random person like it has been done so far. I mean, I guess that's fair, and only time is gonna tell if that's a good decision or not. Because there are a lot of good managers right now. We don't know yeah. what the thing will play will be next year. But also, big teams are also looking for managers this year, so it could probably be a good idea to wait for another year. Um, but yeah, uh, going from. uh sad united discussion to 